Professor Kumar, the President of the Mahatma Gandhi Society of Ottawa, Your Excellency Mr. Gave, the High Commissioner of India, Mrs. Gave, the Deputy High Commissioner of India, Mrs. Chauhan, former Presidents of the Gandhi Society, Dr. Sagan and Dr. Pandey, and the energetic secretary of the society, Mr. Akrawal, a member of the governing board of the Harvard University, and distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to give only a very short message. The time allotted to me is only two minutes. <laughs> Let me first say that I am an ancient Christian by faith and a more ancient Hindu by culture. My ancestor, whom St. Thomas the Apostle baptized in the Kritu Yeri, was a priest of Durga in Kodangalu, or called in the ancient days Museums. So I combine through God's providence a very ancient Hindu culture and the ancient Christian faith from its very beginning. And for that matter, I use a Semitic liturgy the, of the Syrian Semitic liturgy. I would like to say that the mainspring of Gandhiji's life was to serve others. Recently I found a poster in the chapel of the Ottawa General Hospital in which they have given the quintessence of seven comes to, they all come to this. Do unto others as you would like others to do unto you. And in the interpretation of the Jewish faith it was said, this is the quintessence of our religion. All the rest is only commented. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to express my appreciation to Professor Humer for the very laudable manner in which for the past four years he has conducted the affairs of the society and given it a profile which far more than we have done in the past. My message is very short and I'll make it very short. As you celebrate the 140th birthday of Gandhi, the Colossus of the last century, has mankind any choice but to realistically face the fact that some short-sighted men with immense forces of destruction at their command did hijack the new 21st century at its very beginning, thereby depriving the world's people of peaceful coexistence. Are we prepared to remove this suicidal tent right away? This is the question confronting the governments of all nations led by righteous men and women. In this stupendous but inevitable task confronting our noble human race, the doctrines and methods of action as taught to us by Mahatma Gandhi, which are in the ultimate analysis those taught and practiced by the immortal Buddha and Jesus Christ seem to be the most practical means for success. Kathy Arnold's song, Turn the World Around the Other Way, could also provide the inspiration for strong and determined action along this direction. This is also, it seems to me, the gist of the recent encyclical letter by Pope Benedict XVI, Caritas in Veritate, Truth in uh, Charity in Truth, widely acclaimed as the basis of a new world order. People, thinking people all over the world, know that we are in a crisis of humanity, wars and killings of innocent people. I recently came to know that in a particular large village in Cameroon, women have to walk daily five kilometers each way to fetch drinking water. There are literally thousands of such very painful situations in this world. 
The resources of the rich countries are not to be squandered for increasing their arsenals of weapons of destruction, including weapons of mass destruction, but for finding a remedy to enable people in poorer countries to have the necessities for living, such as food, water, and shelter, and to get necessary medical facilities to prevent the high rate of infant mortality and low lifespan. Is democracy a commodity to be imposed on other nations by ruthlessly destroying the lives of tens of thousands of their people? It's a question upon which the leaders of the militarily powerful Western nations ought to reflect upon, to reflect deeply and take the necessary course of action if their Christian foundations are to be really viable and made to agree with Christ's life-giving doctrine. I say this as a very ancient Christian. This is where the principle of Ahimsa, non-violence, should come into play and rectify the present fatal errors by strict adherence to that principle. As Lord Christ said, he who takes the sword will perish by the sword. This is the challenge facing here and now all those who believe in Gandhi's principles of thought and action and nations which stand to benefit by following his salutary principles. Now, I have, brought, I have brought a book with me, a collection of articles written by different people, by Gandhi who are still living, and edited by no less a person than Dr. Radha who was professor at public in Oxford University. I am giving this as a gift to the library of Oxford uh, University in the name of myself and the present uh, president of Professor Kuhner and our secretary, Mr. Akrawan. Thank you.